Hi everyone, it's Miss Ashley. How are you doing today? Are you doing good? Yeah? Awesome, okay. I am here to tell you a story. And today our story is gonna be, why was Jesus born in a stable? Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever seen the pictures of the manger and the stable? And have you ever wondered why Jesus was born there? Let's go over it together. Okay. At the time of Jesus's birth, a Roman imperial named Caesar Augustus ordered that all of his people be officially counted in a census. To be counted, Mary and Joseph had to travel from their home into Nazareth, in Nazareth to Bethlehem. So they went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We don't know for certain how Mary and Joseph traveled, but it probably took them about one week by foot. So to walk on foot from Nazareth to Bethlehem, Nazareth, I'm sorry, they walked that whole way and it took them one whole week. Can you believe that? That is a lot of walking. And that is a, that right there is listening, isn't it? Because Mary was expecting a baby and was probably tired, she might have ridden on a donkey. So maybe she had something to ride on because they don't really know, like like they said, how they got there. But they're assuming that the, maybe they walked on foot. Maybe Mary was riding a donkey. So just when you, when you imagine it, you can just kind of imagine her on a donkey if you want to. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, the town was very crowded. There was no room at the village. Hospitals hadn't been invented yet, so Mary and Joseph had to stay in a stable. Okay, so they had no hospitals yet. They were in Bethlehem and they had to stay in a stable. When Jesus was born, Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes or strips of soft cloth to keep him snug and warm. Then she gently placed him in a manger. That is Luke 2, 7. A manger is a long, open wooden box or trough that contains hay for cattle and horses to eat. Now, hay also um, would be used to keep the baby warm, probably. How happy Mary and Joseph must have been. There is nothing more joyful than welcoming a new baby. Isn't that amazing? So, um, the scripture says there was no rooms left in the inn. So Mary wrapped the baby with clothes and laid him in a box where the animals are fed. And that's Luke 2, 7 as well. Okay, so Jesus was born in a stable. So we started off by the Roman Imperial Caesar August Augustus ordered Mary and Joseph to go to travel from their home from Nazar Nazareth to Bethlehem, okay? Like I said, they don't know if they walked by foot or maybe because Mary was pregnant, she uh, rode a donkey. Um, so we'll just assume that Joseph was on foot and that Mary was riding a donkey, right? Because we want her to be comfortable. <laughs> um, so... It took them about a week to get to Bethlehem. And then when they arrived, um, there wasn't a room available at the village inn. So um, there was no hospitals. So Mary and Joseph had baby Jesus. They stayed in the stable. They had baby Jesus. Uh, Mary wrapped him up. She swaddled him in some cloth clothes and she put him in the um in the cradle, which they actually called the manger, which um, to some of us would be a cradle. And um, the little baby beds that you see, that is exactly what Jesus was put in. Um, so that is the story of why Jesus was born in a stable. And um, I have really exciting news. Let's see. So tomorrow, it's going to be the last day that we'll be reading this book. And then we're going to go 
into the story of Easter for nine days, just from April 1st to April 9th, we'll go into the story of Easter. And I'm going to tell you all about the story of Easter, the real story of Easter. Okay. So that's going to be really exciting. I'm super looking forward to it. So make sure that you make it here and, and get here and listen to Miss Ashley, because I'm really excited to, um, to be here with you during this time. How exciting that we get to celebrate together and that we get to learn about Easter and the resurrection and how Jesus came back to life three days after he died. It's just amazing. Amazing. So we're going to go over all of this stuff. We're going to be educated and you're going to be able to go tell your family about the real Easter story. And they're going to be so excited that you know they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you are so smart. And you are because you are remembering everything. And I'm so, so proud of you. So if you are on here watching me, I just want you to know you are so special. Miss Ashley is so proud of you. And I'm so glad that you're here with me. I'm so glad. Okay, real quick, before we end the video, Miss Ashley always gives you a chance to ask Jesus into your heart. Now, remember... It doesn't matter if you've done it one time. It doesn't matter if you've done it a hundred times. You can do it again, okay? Because sometimes we all do things that kind of make us feel bad. And um, maybe we've sinned. Maybe we've lied. Maybe we've done something that we shouldn't have done. Or maybe we haven't done anything at all. It's okay to still do it. So all I'm going to have you do is just repeat after me, okay? So we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. And you just repeat after Miss Ashley. It's super, super simple. And there's nothing to be scared of. It's just a conversation between you and Jesus, okay? All right. Dear Jesus, I know that sometimes I do things that I shouldn't. And I'm sorry. You came to earth because you love me so much. Thank you for loving me so much that you died for me. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. Help me to do the things you want me to do and not do the things you don't want me to do. Jesus, come into my heart. I want to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we all say together, amen. I am so proud of you. If you said that prayer for the first time or the millionth time, I am so proud of you. And like I said, remember how special you are, and please always keep a smile on your face because that's what God wants, okay? Bye, everyone. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow.